hope you didn't have your fat bastard did you? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce our hostess for the evening, Juliana Ranikopri. for the Hilton. I was with a company called Trader Travel that had a concession in the Hilton. So this is one of the tales. This is number three. It was 1972 and some of the reception staff at the Hilton were talking excitedly about the famous comedian Charlie Callas who was appearing on British TV as a guest of the Welsh singer Tom Jones. He would be staying several days, of course, at the Park Lane Hilton Hotel. I'd never heard of the Greek-American comedian, who apparently was a good friend of Tom Jones and on American TV. Eventually, during the day, Charlie wandered over to the trader travel desk to chat me up and invited me for dinner in the upstairs restaurant. He was a charmer, and I had no special plans after I finished work at 8 o'clock, so I gladly accepted. I recall I was wearing a sexy maxi purple dress with a little slit up the front so that my black lacy tights showed. My brown hair was long and parted in the middle with two French decorative combs. I'd never seen his TV shows nor his famous telephone call comedy routine. For me, he was just a nice, charming American, called Charlie. Over dinner, he spoke about how he was discovered as a drummer, which somehow got him on TV after a wild performance one night. He spoke about his Greek heritage, having the same name as Maria Callas, the world-famous opera singer. He asked about my life and my background and seemed interested in what I had to say. Charlie, with his prominent Greek nose and irregular features, was a very seductive man, and I felt instantly for his charms. He told me he'd fucked hundreds and hundreds of women and loved sex. I began to fantasize. Bedtime <laughs> time came early, around 10 o'clock. It's all true, by the way. And yeah, she's a beauty, son. And we got into the lift, which accidentally went down to the ground floor to let people out. When the doors opened, there was the bitchy general manager who saw Charlie with me and knew we were heading for the bedroom <laughs> up on the top floor. It wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. After, about an hour later, while we were making love, the manager pounded on the bedroom door, shouting that he knew I was inside and that I had to leave. No discreet phone call, just traumatic knocking on the door. I was so scared, I fled like a frightened rabbit into the bathroom. Charlie was furious, opened the door and told the perpetrator to go to hell and that he would be checking out in the morning. I was crying with shame. The sexy atmosphere had been broken. He dressed and accompanied me downstairs, bundling me into the waiting taxi at the back entrance of the hotel. <laughs> I was distraught, trying to hold back my cascading tears. At least the manager gave us an hour of lust and not a mere 20 minutes. The 70s was a time of sexual freedom and experimentation. I was somewhat of a libertine in those early days, long ago and far away. The next day, Charlie rang to say he had checked into the Inn on the Park Hotel next door to the Hilton, and could I come over that <laughs> I told him I'd lost my job, and I didn't want another possible repeat performance, suggesting he came to my room at Warwick Mansions in Hampstead, where I rented a cosy, intimate room with a large, single bed, and Polish and Brazilian colourful artefacts and textile wall hangings. I recall I wanted to take his photo, but he refused. 
How was I to know he was famous? To me, he was just lovely Charlie, and I had fallen for him in a big way. Oh. He was so stimulating, <laughs> relaxed, and open, unlike the usual run of, of the mill men around. I find, in fact, I find comedians I have subsequently met of very serious people. Are you not listening, Ronnie? I am completely, yeah. With my ears. <laughs> what? With my ears. Right. The next morning. Lines. The next morning, the cold, matter of fact general manager sent for me when I got into work at two o'clock. I'd had very little contact with him, just glares. He would see me sometimes sitting outside my long desk by the bar in the comfy chairs or sofas in the middle of the lobby and would reprimand me for sitting there. Of course, the seats were for clients, not trader travel staff. Now, decades later, I fully understand he was only doing his job, but thought at the time he, to, him to be a, mis, a miserable misogynist. I formally, I formally informed him I could... Oh, sorry. He formally informed me I could no longer work at the Hilton. The rules were that the staff could not enter guests' bedrooms. I pointed out I was not Hilton staff and that I was an employee of Trader Travel, not the Hilton. <laughs> he would not accept that and demanded I left by the end of the week, making any excuse to my boss. He agreed he would not write to my boss about my bad behavior, which might have hindered me getting a good reference if I left quietly. I was so upset because first the shame of being fired, and secondly, I loved my exciting job advising tourists where to go in London, what to do and see in Europe as well, meeting prominent Americans and international guests, some of whom asked me to dine with them. I have spoken to Shelley Winters, Jeff Corder from Canada, a nephew of Alexander Corder, the film director, had chatted to Telly Savalas, who played Kojak on TV in 1973, and struck up a friendship with Tom Pollock, who had taken a cut in the benchmark movie American Graffiti and who, a few years later, I stayed with in Laurel Canyon, Los Angeles. I had booked a holiday in Tunisia the following week. Thus, I lied to my manager that I had to leave London and my job to go to Liverpool because my father was seriously ill and I had to help my mother. Trader Travel never paid for my week's holiday to Seuss. The week's holiday was in lieu of my notice, so they got out paying me. I recall calling Charlie from London Airport. He had all his calls screened, but I got through. Through my tears, I told him how much I missed him and how I longed to be with him again. He was very sweet and understanding on the phone, knowing that I had lost my job because of my evening with him. Was he worth it? Yes. <laughs> I never saw him again, but when a friend of mine went to Vegas set some years later, she saw his show and went backstage to meet him, having heard about my fling with him. He remembered me amongst all his conquests and said nice things about me. I forgot all about him until 2016, when I saw the king of American comedy had died aged 83 and began to look him up on YouTube with references like roasting Dean Martin and roasting Frank Sinatra. I had no idea how wacky and formidable he was. Young Giuliana was so innocent in 1972 that she learned fast. That's life. Oh my God. <laughs>